When should you use your emergency heat if you have a heat pump? Today I'm gonna to talk about, is a burning smell normal? When should you use your emergency heat, your auxiliary heat? What is your emergency heat? We're gonna look at the thermostat. We're actually gonna show you how to turn emergency heat on. It's different from thermostat to thermostat. Guys, today you're watching Tips for Homeowners. I'm Tad, let's get started. First thing I wanna show you is I wanna show you a set of heat strips and what it looks like. It's a coil of wire and it is a applied voltage and they glow and sometimes when there's dust accumulated on the heat strips over a year's period, when you turn them on, it actually produces a smell and can actually produce a little bit of smoke and just a burning smell, which is normal. However, if you have flame, fire, um, a lot of smoke coming out of your registers and it doesn't end after about five minutes, then you might need to turn it off you might need to seek some help from a company. Uh, honestly, you might need to call the fire department if it's too dirty, but this is very, very rare, very, very uncommon for it to catch something on fire, but it can happen. So I don't wanna say that it can't because it can happen, but is a, smell, a burning smell normal? It is normal when you turn your emergency heat on, and that's because there's dust that settles on the, the heat strips, the heater coils themselves, and that's what produces the smell. Now, when, when do you use the emergency heat? You use it when it's below 30 degrees. A normal air handler like this, which is a heat pump air handler, these are where the heat strips are contained, and you usually use your emergency heat when it's below 30 degrees, 20 degrees. Why? Because your heater is no longer capable of heating your home. You see the capacity is reduced when you have ice, when you have snow, when it's freezing temperatures, you can no longer gain heat from the outside air. Now we're gonna go look at the outdoor equipment and I'm gonna show you what to look for on your outdoor unit so that you know when to turn the unit off. But emergency heat is auxiliary heat. They're the exact same thing. This is a set of heaters. They're, this is called emergency heat, auxiliary heat. And those coils of wire that glow when a voltage is applied, they actually draw more current than your heat pump, sometimes by two times the current, sometimes three times the current, depending on what type of heater kit you have. Let's go take a look at the outdoor equipment. I'm gonna talk about damage that can occur when it's very, very cold if you don't switch your unit over to emergency heat when it's freezing outside. Let's go look at the outdoor equipment, and then I'm gonna show you how to use your thermostat and turn your emergency heat on. This is your outdoor unit. When you turn your thermostat to emergency heat, you're basically turning this off, which is great because there can be an example of damage that can occur is snow or ice can get inside the top part and it can stop your fan motor from turning the blade. What can happen is it can burn the fan motor up. Your actual blades can break and they can go through your outdoor coil. And this can be an expensive repair that you would have not had to have if you would have turned your unit to emergency heat. So you don't want an expensive repair we don't want the motor or the blades or the outdoor coil to be damaged because you didn't turn your thermostat to emergency heat and the unit was close to the gutters or there was ice that fell off your roof and went straight down. These are examples of what can happen, but this is the outdoor equipment. This is what's trying to gain heat from the outside air. It cannot, at a certain point, the capacity decreases and the load of your structure is more than the capacity of this equipment. So if you have a conventional heat pump, it becomes inefficient and it needs heat strips to hit a balance point. If you have VRF, uh, mini splits, they are different. They actually don't need heat strips and you can check out Samsung, uh, HVAC.com to check out VRF technology and heat pumps that actually will heat in colder, even negative temperatures. Let's go inside, look at the thermostat. I'll show you how to turn your unit on emergency heat. All right, so how do we turn our unit to emergency heat? This is one type of thermostat called a York 21 thermostat. And if you just open the flap here, pull this down, it's gotta be on heating for it to work. You've got an emergency heat button here, okay? Look at this emergency heat button. And I'm gonna show you that you just click the emergency heat button, okay? And when you do that, it will actually come up here, emergency heat. Now I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And we're gonna go look at another type of thermostat and I'm gonna show you guys how to turn that thermostat to emergency heat. So this is a different type of thermostat and it's made by American Standard. It's called a 402 thermostat. And actually on the screen, if you can see this right here, I'm gonna light it up. You can actually push mode until it goes to emergency heat. I'm gonna show you that right here on the screen. See where it says emergency heat? See, this is regular heat here and then you've got emergency heat. 
An emergency heat and an auxiliary heat are the exact same thing. When it says auxiliary heat, when you're in regular heat function, when it says auxiliary heat, that's actually your heat strips coming on. So hit emergency heat, turn the unit on whatever temperature you want to maintain in your home, and then you can avoid any damage to your outdoor equipment. So emergency heat's on, and now we don't have to worry about the inclement weather outside ruining our outdoor equipment. So when do you use your emergency heat? Use, use your emergency heat on conventional heat pumps when it gets below 30 degrees outdoors. And you especially use it when you have an ice storm or you have ice or snow accumulation outdoors. That's when you use your emergency heat. Is it uncommon for the heat strips to produce a burning smell? No, it's not uncommon. It's actually common. Uh, it's just from dust accumulation uh, during the off season where it's not heating during the summer during the spring when it's not using those heat strips and it only usually use the heat strips on the thermostat when it says auxiliary heat or when you turn to emergency heat auxiliary heat is only used when your set point and your room temperature has a certain amount of difference between it then auxiliary heat will automatically kick on which is emergency heat or it's a interval a timing interval that the thermostat has built in Hey guys, something I want to mention is that when it's really cold and you're using just your heat pump and it's freezing outside, it can seem like the heat pump is running or the unit's running forever and it's not shutting off. And that is because your heat strips or auxiliary heat have not kicked on. And if they don't kick on and the heat pump can't gain heat from the outside air, then it's going to stay running. It's not efficient. So that's why during freezing temperatures, it's really critical that you use your emergency heat because not only is your unit going to run forever and not shut off because it's trying to heat your home when it can't, but, it, but you could damage the equipment and I don't want that to happen. So remember, if your unit seems like it's running all night long, turn your emergency heat on. I hope this video was beneficial for you and that you learned something about your heat pump and when to use your emergency heat. I'm Tad, this was Tips for Homeowners, and I'm reminding you that I'll keep you cool if you let me.